Epsilon Zanat, Ain't I Just a Link. Greetings. As you know, we just did a, a brief series on um, the etymological, Shemitic, and language comparisons between, like, the Ethiopic and the Hebrew, as well as the Islamic traditions, especially concerning these um, demonic beings, these demonic beings, which are known as the, the jinn in Arabic, Balmarinya Ghanain, and in the English, they call them diamones. Diamones is another way of saying demons. Now, we want to do a little series since we've been watching quite a few of these movies, you know, over time. A little more recently, you know, we get an opportunity. We've been watching certain movies, um, Nollywood movies. So, there's a Rastafari-inspired Hebrew, um, you know, community, of course, in Africa throughout Africa. There's a lot of African Rastafari, um, as there should be, of course. But what we need to do is really recognize how we've been divided and conquered and scattered. So a lot of elements that really help us to understand the Bible has been fragmented. You understand? Almost like a tower. There was a tower of Babel, so to speak, and it was scattered. You understand? But this is the scattering of the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, the scattering of Jah's people. And Jah's people are scattered in the four corners of the earth. Of course, we acknowledge ourselves as the Beit Israel. We African, Afro-Americans, and um, Afro-Hispanic and Afro-Caribbean peoples who recognize that we are the black Hebrews or Ethiopian Hebrews and what our people have gone through is, in a sense, a national sort of a, um, how should we say, a, a national uh, generational curse. And we look at what black people, especially those who were enslaved, and then we already know the connection with a lot of the Africans who don't accept us as Africans. Many of their ancestors were our enslavers, but getting beyond that, what we want to do is to bring to one's attention this particular book. It's called Anadja, Everybody's Roots. I think we had featured and talked about this particular book, you understand, previously. And it's dealing with the Igbo or the Igbo, you understand, and this brother here, this brother here. To give you a little bit of understanding on this, um, this book is written by our brother uh, David by our brother David, um, he keeps his name, he keeps his name, or oh, it's the King David Press, by our brother David here. Well, let's go through this. It says, the method is, in fact, quite simple, the method. And we're going to call this series Overstanding Nollywood. This is, this is a, a, a preface to a series Overstanding Nollywood, because in watching the African movies, there's a lot of things, basically, in a lot of different African movies. If you've seen any of them, some people, it's a quiet taste. Some people may not be into them because they're into more of the Hollywood special effects or they may not, you know, claim they don't understand what is going on. I mean, even in the English movies. So this might help and assist ones in overstanding Nollywood as well as overstanding those elements that the Bible actually speak about in their manifold forms. In other words, getting back to that root, and we're using this particular book right here, Imagine Everybody's Roots, as a basic introduction, as a basic introduction, especially since this book is a Rastafari, African, Nigerian, Igbo, Hebrew, Bible-inspired work. In other words, all of that is a part of who we are. In fact, you should already know that the N-word, nigger, is just another variation of Niger or, or the river Niger, Niger. Then we have also in the Bible, we have um, Simeon who is called the, the nigger, you understand, or the Niger, you understand. And if you look that word up, it means black. It's the very same word. So the N-word been around for quite a while, both in the European racist form and in its more indigenous, you understand, root meanings. But this is where we have to go to Anadja, you understand, or the Anadja, the Anadja, everybody's roots. So some of the background information, this is one of the first of the, of the Igbo, of the Igbo literature, 
And others have already made that connection between, and let's put this right here. This is the Chinaike. And we're going to touch on this hopefully briefly in, in this particular um, series. But if we take the word Ebo, some write it as Ebo, you understand? Basically what we have is Hebrew. And the people testify, even the Yorubas who are, the Yorubas who are, some say another tribe and that people put differences, even among the Tutsis and the Hutsis and the Hutus and the, and the Tutsis, there was also, there's, there's, there's also a Hebrew, Ethiopian and a Hebrew, um, there's a presence, a Shemitic or a Hebrew presence. And a lot of these tribal conflicts are actually between the Kamite or the Hamitic black Africans and the Shemitic black Africans. And with this division, there's a division in the interpretation of reality. You understand the interpretation of reality. But the same symbols, you understand the same symbols basically govern both of them, but the interpretation is different. In fact, music catting had made a comment about his imperial majesty meeting with one of the um a, a, a indian a indian man i forget the the man's name but they were discussing points about spirituality and the brother had asked um was his majesty really speaking about different religions or about different interpretations you understand of the different religion because some hindus even regard themselves as um, monotheists and they also acknowledge that there are certain gods now some from a biblical white Western Christian will say, oh, that's, that's false. But then if you look in the Bible, you'll see the very same thing. In fact, the word usually translated for God in the very beginning, Elohim, is also used throughout for gods. And this has caused a lot of the bibulators a lot of trouble, you understand, and really properly, you understand, explaining and speaking the truth. And it takes a little bit more than what they're willing to give, and hopefully this will be a basic first step in that process. So anyway, this book right here, Anadja, just to give you a, a kind of a quick overview of this particular book, and it's from the Eziajana Foundation, Eziajana Foundation, the Emo State of Nigeria, and it's from the Institute of Hebrew Knowledge. I'll show you right this right here, the Institute of Hebrew Knowledge. So if we really want to understand Hebrew and understand the Bible, we need to get to the African roots. What a lot of folks don't even recognize is that the, the white, German, and, and Polish Jews would have set up the state of Israel actually in Uganda. Another book that we have right here, um, you might know this book as well, talks about it. Um, we the Black Jews by um, Dr. Ben, you understand, also speaks about that. And there's some other books also that we reference within the knowledge of self, the basic knowledge of self. But the method is, in fact, quite simple. Sound equivalent of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin words used in English language are taken from Ebo with an ex Explicative translation. The results are startling. The results are very startling. Words begin to make sense in their setting. Well, I often regard as the context. I always say we have to get in the context, otherwise what we're dealing with is with nonsense if we don't get the right context. So here the author says that words begin to make sense in their setting. A new dimension of understanding is reached. The method may seem haphazard in view of the changes a word has undergone on its passage from ancient Hebrew, and what we're talking about is the true biblical Hebrew, to modern English. A tolerant ear, a tolerant ear may stretch its comprehension to accord with present theories. With imagination, meaningful synonyms can doubtlessly be found in any language. The author is quite aware of such criticisms and wishes to convince doubting Thomases by the force of his argument as it stands. He further issues an invitation to all the scholars to consult and discuss their respective languages for wider 
understanding, what we as Rastafari call overstanding. The essence of this work is the translation of words from Hebrew, Greek, Latin into Igbo and back into English. To impress the significance of this proposition and convey a sense of purpose, these words are placed within a literary context, sections from the Bible. Unfortunately, most Western readers will be insufficiently familiar with the book to make any of the connections for themselves. Thus, side notes are provided by the author. With the Igbo translation, we begin to see these stories in a different light. Words and names gain significance from the context and result in a new comprehension of the story itself. Religious truth apart, the revelations of this analysis confound and reshuffle existing concepts and constructions. Biblical history is reappraised and given serious treatment by introducing Africa into the design. Many puzzling questions are resolved. Western history's traditional cutoff points are ancient Greece, Israel, or at least Egypt. With Anadja, everybody's roots, we return further back in time and further south, south in space, beyond the Sahara. The evidence lies not only in archaeological discoveries of material nature, but the words and concepts of a living language, a language that claims to be the most authentic survivor of an ancient original, a language spoken in Central Africa many thousand years ago, which traveled northward with trade, and migration, and has even survived in this form in the modern European languages. And what we want to make the connection now to, since he also has pointed to Ethiopia and even to Amharic and even made uh, attempts at bridging, you understand, making that bridge between the Igbo and the Igbo, you understand, and the Amharic, with the Bible as the background and context, we'd like to take that uh, just a little bit further. This is what we want to begin with this particular um, concept right here and this particular word that if you've been watching, if you watched any of the, the Nollywood movies, you may often hear them call upon the name of God. Uh, when, like in Western culture, people say, oh, God. They will say, uh, Chinike, Chinike, you know, Chinaike, Chinike, you know, oh, Chinike, you know, and do that three times. So one of the background studies for this also that's very crucial is um, Joe Macy's writings, because Joe Macy also said back in the late um, 1800s, around like, the, you know, the, the 20th century, the early t the turn of the century, he basically said in his writings that the true keys of the Bible, of the Hebrew language, of ancient Egypt are to be found in, he pointed to Ethiopia, and he pointed to inner Africa, that these concepts that nowadays are so woefully distorted, you know, with uh, Caesar's Christ, uh, Caesare, Cesare, Borgia, the white Jesus, blonde hair, blue eye, and there's a whole lot of that in the in the Nollywood movies, you know, you see a whole lot of that. That's still one of the areas that's that's one of the um Jericho walls in a sense that has to come down. And hopefully as ones begin to recognize that this story basically came out of Africa. As Macy says, in Africa and Ethiopia, in fact the whole continent was called Ethiopia. In fact the Southern Atlantic Ocean where black so called slaves, Africans were enslaved, the Hebrews, the Ebos were enslaved and brought to the West wasn't called the Atlantic Ocean. If you go back in time, at the time of the slave trade, it was called the Ethiopic Ocean. So that shows you that Ethiopia and the Ethiopian, the black, ancient black empire stretched actually from, from um, 
West Africa and the Ethiopic Ocean all the way to India. So I find this to be very interesting with our brother Music Katzings pointing out, you know, that Hindu and certain theological, spiritual interpretations connection, you understand, in one of his recent posts. But this point that we've been talking about for a moment, so we're going to get into um, um, China Ike. You understand, China Ike. Now, one of the early concepts since the author said that they would um, – use the Bible as a context, even there's a treatment of his imperial majesty. You understand there's a recognition, you understand, of the reality of the King of Kings. In other words, this is a beautiful this is a beautiful first Ebo or Ebo uh, literature. And I'm not sure if some of the Nigerians themselves know about it. Perhaps they are not willing to accept it. We don't know. But this is for I and I to overstand to overstand Nollywood and overstand these movies. Now, here we drew the Chi Na Ike. Now, let's look at this Chi Na Ike for a moment. Now, according to page 14, Chi Na Ike would be the one we would call the, the serpent. In other words, the serpent the, is, the, is the image and the symbology of the serpent in, in the garden, you understand, or, or, or the snake, what's known as the serpent and often characterized as, as the, quote, devil. Now, we have to be very careful, like a lot of folks often think that whenever uh, that the serpent is by its nature evil, you understand, like the serpent is by its nature evil, and that would be a, a false, a false, um, mis and then a misjudgment of the reality. And when we go to the root, we find that Chinna Ike, also spelled in this way, and what's interesting is, you know, it's China, E.K., you have China, and we know that the serpent, you know, symbology is worshipped, you understand, in, in, in China and in all those countries that you go to the east. You remember in the story in the Bible where it talks about how Nimrod, that, that, that son of Cush, and you understand that, that big, bad black man who's been so um, demonized by um modern um, religiosity, but he was a Cushite. He was an Ethiopian. How he founded, they say, the first kingdom known as Babylon. They also say that he's the one who built the Tower of Babel. But recall something. It says in the Bible that there were people who were traveling from the east. Look at a map for a moment. Look at Ethiopia in the map. Look at Arabia. You know saying? Go further to Iraq, which is the relative region that was known, Iraq, Iran, but more Iraq, that was known as the ancient Babylon. Now, if you are in Babylon, right, and you're coming, people are coming from Ethiopia, what direction is that? That's not east. That's west. So Nimrod came from the west. But there were people who came from the east who wanted to establish a tower. You know, so just that point right there proves that Nimrod, it wasn't Nimrod and Nimrod's people who said, come, let us build a tower, as they say, you understand, because they traveled from the east. And Ethiopia is actually west, unless there's something else that we don't know about that story that we have to get to the root of. But anyway, overstanding Nollywood, so, because you need to overstand Nollywood. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think it's very important for us, even on this level, we talk about Africa and we're speaking about Rastafari and the Bible and, 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 and feeling a desire to, to be more rooted and grounded in that which is self-referential to ourselves. It's important for us to understand Nollywood you know what I'm saying? and some of the themes and concepts and elements that are African and they still manifest over here in the West whether it's in some of the more occultic practices, you understand, usually termed obia and voodoo and witchcraft and so forth and so on. But before it was all of that, it was the serpent in the garden. And before it was all of that, it was Moses lifting up the serpent. And before it was all of that, it was Jesus saying, be ye, be as wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Now, if the serpent is misinterpreted as a negative concept, imagine how that twists and distorts, you understand, the good influences of the Messiah's teaching, of Christ's teaching. So we have to understand that in the ancient times, the serpent was not only considered as an evil symbol, it was considered as a symbol. 
And to get to the root, we are going to imagine everybody's roots. And here on page 14, in the margin, as you can see right here, in the margin, this is what we tried to describe on the screen right here, you understand, on the, on the whiteboard right here, um, it says, China Ike, English, in the English sense, in the English sense, the English pronounce this as China Ike, together is pronounced as snake. Now, it may take some of y'all a moment to really get it, you know, and when you get it, you might go, oh, you know what I'm saying? Chinaike. Remember, this is not the ch, just a ch, but it also can have a, be syllabated. That means it can have a sh, there can be a sh sound. China, China, Chinaike, 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 Chinaike. So this is the snake. Now, in the Igbo, is China Ike, right? Now, the English pronounce this as snake. So when the English say snake, in the Igbo or Igbo, it is China Ike. Now, what is the literal meaning? Now, the literal meaning, according to Anaja, everybody's roots, is the God responsible for this world of positives and negatives of the rich and the poor. So this is the God or the elemental. These are what they call the elementals. You understand? Also known as the gods. In the Hebrew, they are called the Elohim, right? In ancient Egypt, they were called the Netter. You understand? And we can go on and on and on and on, basically. Also known as the seven spirits. Some regard the gods as being the seven elemental forces or the, or the seven kingdoms. You know, like the, the animal kingdom, the mineral kingdom, plant, protoplast, so forth and so on, to the, higher, to the higher beings. You understand? Some might call these higher beings extraterrestrials. Some may call them angels. You understand? Be that as it may. So this is the God, you understand, or the elemental that was responsible for the what? For the positives, right? For the positives and the negatives, or for the pros and the cons. Now, what's interesting in Genesis, we see this, this China Ike, is now in a negative sense, right? In Moses, right, Moshe, because remember, death reigned from Adam, the Bible says, to Moses. Think about that. So death ruled, death reigned, death reigned like a king from Adam to Moses. Not just from Adam to Christ, but it says death reigned. But the reign of death, which is also another elemental, you know what I'm saying, was broken by our Coptic Hebrew brother Moshe, you know what I'm saying, who was learned in all the wisdom, you know what I'm saying, of the Egyptian or of the Egypts, both of Egypt and of inner Africa, you know what I'm saying, of inner Africa or the Tobia or Ethiopia, the inner Africa wisdom. This is where he understood, you know what I'm and began to overstand. And this is why the story that we have in Genesis is written there. But, like so many things, it's been woefully misunderstood. You understand? So what we're going to do is go through the acts of the China Ike or the Shneke, the snake, the China Ike, the China Ike. You understand? The snake, right? Now, according to um, this first Igbo literature, Anaja, it says that now the China Ike, was the most cunning animal which the Elihati, the Elihati, the light, the light, the Elihati, and Eziajana, and Eziajana, Eziajana to say, to say Christ or to say the Lord or to say God. In fact, he has Eziajana here as Zion, X, Eon, Christ, Eon Christian, the supreme source of creation, the royal dust, and the ground of the earth. Psychologically, metaphysically, that's the ground of reality. But let's write this right here. Ezi, we're going to go Ezi, Ezi, 
Ezi Ajana, right? Ezi Ajana, which is to say Christ. Remember, it says that Christ was there in the garden. Of course, he had to be there, right? The Eli, the Eli, how does he spell it? The Eli, the Eli, Eli for E, Hati. Like Haiti there, right? The Eli Hati. So this is the Lord, right? This is the Lord, and this is Christ. Or should we say, as the Bible says, this is the Lord God, right? And the Lord God. The Elihati and Ezi Ajana. Ezi, Ezi Ajana. Ezi Ajana, right? So, now the Shinaike was the most cunning or subtle, as the Bible is translated to say, animal, which the Heliati, the Elihati and Ezi Ajana had made. The Shinaike acts. Ivim, Ivim. Well, who is Ivim? Let us try to write this right here. We'll write this above the China Ek. Ivim, I, V, I, M. This is to say Eve. This is Eve right here. The Ivim is the Eve. Now, we we'll probably have to we'll have to uh, do this on another on another board. Break down even how. Like if you put hey one, right, the I replaces the H, the W, you understand, hey one, or hawa, you understand, becomes a V, and the hey one, the N becomes an M. This is called permutation. It happens in languages all the time. Some speakers, you know, different languages is based about expression of spirit, different languages. But still, it all is coming out of one. But the variety and the change, you know, and the linguists and those who study it see these changes in language where they both are seeking to express a similar reality but in a change of words. So Ivim would be Eve or from the Hebrew, Heywan, Hawa, Heywan, right? Heyvan, Ivim. Did the Eliodi, did the Eliodi, now the Eliodi, you understand, Eliodi is Lord, you understand, is Lord. Did Eliodi really tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the Ubim? In the Ubim, the Ubim would be the garden. In the Ubim, so there's a relation between Ivim and Ubim. Now, this is, very, this is very interesting when we start to even study the Hebrew and the Ethiopic root. Now, quote, we may eat fruit from any tree in the Ubim, Ivim answered, except the tree in Ogbo Edere, in the Ogbo Edere. Now, the Ogbo Edere is translated here as Tower of Edere. Literal meaning is the place of the letter the place of the matter, the place of the recorded. The Eliodi told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. The cunning Shinaike, Shinaike replied, that is not true. You will not die. They said that because they know that when you eat it, you will be like demo, de emo, de emo, dem. You'll be like dem, de emo, or bamarinya, you'll be like the blood. And know what is positive and what is negative. You will know what is positive and what is negative, right? I then saw how good its fruit would be to eat, and she told and she thought how wonderful it would be to become wise. I then took some of the fruit and ate it, then gave some to Adim. Adim is Adam. And he also ate it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given. Now, this word here is a little, we'll break it down. Fahamasi Eli Wadikasi. Fahamasi Eli Wadikasi, 
and that is pharmaceuticals, which literal meaning is a total knowledge or of positives and negatives. But here's the trick. They were already in the positive reality. They were already in that positive reality. Now, by reaching out for that tree and violating the Elihodi's commandment, they now were responsible for their own positives and negatives. Basically, what they gained was negative. They did not gain more positive. They get, that, that's, that, that there is the trick. It's only when you watch some of the Nollywood movies. The person already basically has a good life, but they get tricked in their own greed and ignorance. You understand? Ignorance is the sin of the soul. You understand? It causes them to become greedy and go after more, and then they lose everything. This is the key story. This is the key meaning. And this is a very ancient um, parable. We can call it a myth, a mutos. It's a part of the mystery of God in Christ. But most people, if you don't understand this first parable, this first story, the rest of the book you understand, is going to be cloudy to you. You're going you're gonna to have um, chinaike. You're going to have these positives and negatives. You understand? And then it was true translation and false translation. But if you understand this first story, then you'll be able to see the truth, the, the true meaning that's going from beginning, from Genesis to Revelation. Just a little bit more. Now, Adam, also, he also ate of it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given fahamasi aliwadikasi, you understand, or pharmaceuticals. They got addicted. They were on drugs. They already had began to lose their minds. For example, in the beginning, right, I mean, okay, just say before nowadays, people didn't need all these kind of pharmaceuticals. You, you notice that? For real. That was only to make up for something lacking. Now imagine somebody already healthy, you understand, and starts to take certain things that the person who is sick takes. What happens? They become an addict. They become addicted. So the Chinaike also, in a sense, could be considered that peddler, you understand, that, that original peddler. And immediately they realized that they were anaikedi, anaikedi. They were naked. They were anaikedi, you understand, which means literally the presence of creation also enakadi, you understand, naked or seen natural. So they sold palm leaves together. According to the Igbo, this is why when you see the movies, the palm wine, you understand? So did they get drunk? You understand? They sow palm leaves together and cover themselves. Because what happens when a person gets drunk? They forget. And if you, suppose you got drunk, right? And this might have happened to some people. Suppose you got drunk and you woke up and you was naked there and somebody else naked, naked next to you. But you don't remember what happened. You understand? Um, you would feel this shame. You know what I'm saying? You would feel this shame. Now, if you got drunk or if you were given this, uh, this so-called drug or this strong drink or even herb or marijuana in an initiation, in the proper order, if you wait it. It's like in those movies where they say, wait until such and such and such. Don't touch this. But then the character always goes and touches it. And what always happens? It's always Problems, the positive and the negatives, you understand, the physics, the, you, you know, the phenomena, the noumen and phenomena comes about. Now, that evening, they heard as the Ajana, or Christ, as the Ajana, and the Elihati, you understand, the light of Christ, Christ the light walking in the Ogbo Edere, and they did hide from them among the trees. Now, remember, in in the Bible, in the Hebrew, it says Elohim. And Elohim, if strictly interpreted, would be God's. But now in the New Testament, we hear Christ, Jesus Christ says to the disciples and to all of us, if his word is in us and we are in his word, we become one with him, right? As he is one with his Father, and we all are one. But if there's three of us, right, and we become one with Christ, wouldn't that make four, some people would say? And then if Christ is one with his father, that will make five? See, that's when you look at it that way. This is why people can't understand the true spiritual abstraction and nature of the Trinity. You understand? Because they have not mastered, you understand, or really acknowledged the truth of the five cycle or the physical world. 
so they can't really perceive correctly the spiritual world. That evening, they heard as the Ajana and Deli Hati walking in the Ogbo Adere, and they did hide from them among the trees. But the Eliodi, the, the Eliodi called to the Inmano, to the Inmano or to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the Ubin, in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. Who told you that you was naked, as the Ajana asked? Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? The Inmano answered, the Onwe Inmano, the Onwe Inmano, the woman, the Onwe Inmano, the woman you put here with me, gave me the fruit, and I ate it. As the Ajana asked, the Onwe Inmano, why did you do this? She replied, the Chinaike tricked me into eating it. Now here, as the Ajana pronounces the judgment, then the Eliodi, the Eliodi, as the Ajana said to the Chinaike, to the Chinaike, you will be punished for this. You alone of all the animals must bear this curse. From now on, you will crawl on your belly, and you will have to eat dust as long as you live. I will make you and the Onwen Mano hate each other. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head, and you will bite their heels. The Eziajana said to the woman, Onwen Mano, I will increase your trouble in pregnancy and your pain giving birth. Another element in a lot of the Nollywood movies always surrounds itself a, a, a lot of times around that, around either giving birth to children, a woman can't give birth, second wife, or some kind of element that is very, very biblical. You understand? And watching those movies, I get a better perspective when I'm studying the Bible of how things really are in reality than these Hollywood kind of movies, Charles and Heston and all that blah, blah nonsense, because it's coming out of inner Africa, not from Europe. You understand? The true light is coming out of Africa. You understand? All we're getting is a, a poor reflection and a dirty mirror coming out of from Europe. But anyway, and as the Ajana said to the woman, okay, I went through this part. As the Ajana said to the woman, on the way I will increase your trouble in pregnancy and your pain giving birth. In spite of this, you will still have desire for your husband, yet you will be subject to him. And as the Ajana said to the Inmano, to the man, you listen to your Waivi, your Waivi, your wifey, your Waivi, and ate the fruit which I told you not to eat. Because of what you have done, the ground will be under a curse. You will have to work hard all of your life to make it produce enough food for you. It will produce weeds and thorns, and you will have to eat wild plants. You will have to work hard and sweat to make the soil produce anything, just like it is in many parts of Africa, and a lot of the movies portray that, that reality. Until you go back to the dust, and the ground of the earth, until you really go back metaphysically to the ground of reality, recognize the true ground of reality. But if you want to live in this dream state that you made because of the violation and because of listening either to the own way in mono or, in the case of the own way in mono, even to the chinaike, you understand, then you will have to live in this world of positives and negatives, of rich and poor. You understand, of happy and sad, you have to live in this kind of merry-go-round. You understand, because we are told that as the Ajana or Christ has come to give us life and life more abundantly, it didn't say that he's come to give us life, but sometime it'll be bad or sometime it'll be good. No, he's come to give us life and life more abundantly. You understand, the fullness of it is life, not life and a little bit of death. No, those things are past. So let's understand this. So you listen to your Waivi. You understand? And ate the fruit which I told you not to because 
what because of what you have done, the ground will be under a curse. You will have to work hard all your life to make it produce enough food for you. It will produce weeds and thorns, and you will have to eat wild plants. You will have to work hard and sweat to make the soil produce anything until you go back to the dust and the ground of the earth from which you were formed. You were made from Aja and Anna, from Aja and Anna, and you will return to Ajana again. Adim called Evim Onwe Imanu, woman, which means actually help meet man. In other words, help, help meet, assistant in that sense for man, help meet for man, help that's right and proper for man because with her all mankind came into being. But see now when we start to follow that up, we'll begin to learn how through a misunderstanding of that in the whole positives and negatives, how we get the ancient so-called goddess, you understand? And then in its Western form, see, in the African form is the goddess, it's, it, you know, it's the goddess cult, you know, and the witchcraft and so forth and so on. But in the West, it's the bitchcraft and feminism, you understand? So it's very, it's the same sort of, witchcraft or the same sort of background to both of them, but they manifest differently in Africa than in the West. But even to overcome what's going on in the West, which the Africans interestingly call the West the land of the gods, that's interesting because he has said that we are gods. All of us are sons and daughters of the Most High. But because of the Chinaike, you understand, we would die as men. You understand? Until the coming of the Moshiach. You understand? And until the fulfillment of this, of this, this thing that we in. Anyway, I'm going to go forward to another part of this, you understand, which it will be on the, the, the Chere Ubim, the Chere Ubim. And also, hopefully, we'll touch on the Abi Araham, or the Abi Aram, you understand, or, or Abraham, and so forth and so on. But if you can, get a, get a copy of this book. It's a very, very interesting book, you understand, because it helps us to link various elements in our culture, you understand, as, as Africans, you understand, as Hebrews, you understand, as Rastafari, bringing all of that together because we're going to the Anaja, to everybody's roots. I guess it's true when we say, you know, like, everybody and anybody can be a nigger. You know what I mean? Anijah. Anijah.